Tesla is down over 42% year to date on their stock price. The sales were declining. They're about to announce their next earnings. They're cutting prices left and right. The sky is falling. That is if you believe the headlines out there and what they're predicting for not just Tesla, but for the overall EV market. So the good news is we have data to actually show us what reality is here. And I'm going to do what I do and dive into it. See how Tesla is doing so far this year in 2024, and then see what else is going on with the rest of the EV market. And if we can get any actual meaning, some, some signal from all the noise that's being shouted out by all the media outlets out there. Let's dive in. All right, so as of this recording, Tesla stock year to date down 42, almost 43%. On the day itself, they're down just over 3%, and things are just generally not looking good recently for them. Now, if we take a look, let's see what's actually happening to their market share. So I found some data online that shows the actual EV market share by different automaker for a bunch of quarters going back to Q1 of 2021. And I created this graph here showing a stacked area chart is what it's called. So essentially it's zero to 100% and each little segment here, each little river run is which automaker holds what percentage of the market at that time. So going back to the earliest data point, Tesla in Q1 of 2021 had just over 70%. They peaked at 77.8, it's almost 80% there. And then as of the last numbers here, we have in 2023 Q4, they're just over 50%, 51.15, which is up from 50.19, but still kind of flat. But basically things have not been trending well in terms of the overall market share for Tesla. You can see some of the other ones coming up, Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, Ford, Lincoln, Volkswagen Group, General Motors, so all the legacy ones. Then finally you have one of the newcomers, Rivian, BMW, and then just basically a whole host of like little guys up there. So I kind of color coded them all the same. So overall, yeah, it does look like Tesla is definitely losing ground to the more legacy automakers. Rivian of the newer startups is doing the best. And overall, you know, things that are shifting around in terms of who is actually selling the most EVs here in the US. And I took another look at this where we have the highest quarter of our data, 2021 Q4, where Tesla had 77.8% to the most recent one we have at 51.15. So you can see here just in about two years, Tesla has lost quite a bit of market share and everyone else has sort of kind of felt filled in the gaps there, right? So you see everyone else, all these other colors, these other colored bars get bigger. And so really the question is, is this a big shift for the EV market or is it just something that is mostly affecting Tesla? Well, if you look, the overall EV market in the US jumped 60% from 2022 to 2023. We went from 1 million to 1.6 million electric cars sold, which is a huge amount of growth where there's already been a ton of growth going all the way back to 2020 where things really started to take off. You had 100% growth, another 40 to 50% growth, and now a 60% growth. I mean, this right here is a great trend. It's sort of that hockey stick that all of us in the EV space have been predicting is gonna happen for a long time now. And to put a bit of color on that, here is a map showing the number of EVs registered by state. The color is per 10,000 residents as of 2022. This is from the Department of Energy. You can highlight over here and you can see essentially where people are buying them the most. You have California and then you have Florida and Texas. The coastlines are basically the ones, and then also some in the middle here, like Colorado is really big. Uh, Minnesota is really big. Illinois is really big. So it's pretty spread out. California, of course, is the leader here, but it's not like it's isolated to just California. This is something that is starting to sweep across the nation. And if we head over to the EIA, the Energy Information Administration, who does a lot of great reporting on this, they're showing that as of January 31st, 2024, so very recent, electric vehicles and hybrids surpassed 16% of total U.S. light-duty vehicle sale. That is a big, big number because obviously we buy a lot of those in the U.S. And you can see here on the right this little chart showing a breakout by EV versus hybrid. Now, hybrid in this case is your traditional hybrid, which is really just a gas car that uses some electric components to get more mileage. But all told, 
this is where the market is heading. You can kind of see just overall people are headed towards battery electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, and the traditional hybrids there. And you can see it going back to 2020 is where we started to see this sort of hockey stick growth again. And I think one of the reasons why is because the price is coming down. So this is also from the EIA. You can see here the monthly US light duty vehicle transaction prices by type. So luxury on top kind of hasn't changed, no big deal. But look at battery electric vehicles and the price going back to July 2022 really has started to come down. And it's just barely above the total industry average, which is tremendous. And that right there, I think is going to make it much more interesting for people because this has been one of those sort of myths that's been around forever, that battery electric vehicles are super expensive and you nobody can afford them except rich elites on the coast or whatever. Here you can see that the average selling price is much closer to the industry average. And as we look at the price and how it's dropping, it reminds me of how I'm able to manage the expenses I have using today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Have you ever signed up for a subscription and then completely forgot about it only to find out years later that you've spent all this money for something you're not using? Yeah, that happens to me too. Quite a lot. Ask Jenny. And it wasn't until I found Rocket Money that I was able to actually correct this problem by using their app, which I've been using since day one. Rocket Money has a really cool feature that allows you to cancel subscriptions directly from the app. You don't have to call into customer service or anything. And you can even have them try to negotiate your bill lower on your behalf. And if nothing else, it shows you your subscriptions. You bring in all your different bank accounts to it and it just gives you a really good view of where you're spending your money. Now, I've personally used Rocket Money in the past to cancel lots of subscriptions with just a few clicks, no customer service calls or anything else. It was really as simple as just clicking, I don't want this anymore. And as an entrepreneur, Rocket Money has absolutely helped me keep my finances in check. So this whole thing we're doing here on YouTube can keep being profitable for me and my family and allows me to keep making videos for you guys. So if you're ready to get your finances back on track and see kind of how much money you could be saving by canceling these subscriptions you don't use, check it out at rocketmoney.com slash bensullins or the link in the description. Thanks Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get back to the video. And if you want to project out from where we are today, the history of that, of battery electric vehicles specifically from where we're at now, just about 8% all the way out to 2050, is kind of what we're looking at with this chart from the EIA again. I kind of like this. The light pink area is the confidence band essentially, because obviously we can't predict the future fully, but you can kind of see what the reference case may be and then the upper and lower bounds of that. So it could be a lot higher or it could be kind of you know towards the middle there but overall as we head in the future we're going to see a lot more battery electric vehicles so the notion that they're going away is kind of foolish at this point and to prove that point we actually now have over 2 million on-road light duty electric vehicles as of 2021 the latest data we have here from the EIA that right there is showing that the amount of them that are on the road and are continuing to stay on the road are growing and growing and as sales accelerate like i said 60% year over year growth this number is just going to get bigger and bigger so REVs going away was this a flash in the pan the data suggests otherwise looking at different incentives that are out now, making the average price of a new EV much more affordable from day one. And then over the lifespan of it, it becomes even more and more affordable because of how much cheaper it is to go a mile in an EV than it is a gas car. That right there is gonna drive a huge amount of demand. And we're working our way from initially the luxury side of the market all the way down into the more economical side with even cheaper EVs coming out. And so really what's happening now is the general audience, the general market is starting to wake up to this and accept it. And just as an example here, if you look at the 2024 Ionic 5 uh, SUV that got a bunch of awards with a really good starting MSRP, 42,000 basically with over 300 miles of range, because of the way the tax credits work, you can actually apply that at the time of purchase, transfer it to the dealer, and that brings the lease price of this down to just over $200 a month. And then you have to remember that you're gonna spend 60 to 80% less on fuel. So think about what you're paying now. Are you paying more than $200 a month? Are you paying more than $400 a month when you include gas and everything else? These are becoming the most economical vehicles from the first day that you get the keys all the way through the time when you trade it in for your next EV. But getting back to Tesla specifically, are they doomed? Is this the end? Well, 
Tesla has a few unique challenges that some of the other automakers don't have. Notably that a lot of the stock and a lot of the people that have bought the stock and pump it online did so because of the promise of self-driving cars. Now, Elon has recently said that they're going to unveil their robotaxi, but we don't know any other details than that right now. So really, the, the, the thing that really blew them up in terms of their stock was this idea that they would change how car ownership works. And that may still come to pass, but it's certainly not possible today, not likely this year. If you read estimates online, it could be, you know, two years away or 20 years away. So whether or not that comes to fruition, I think is the big wild card here, because if it doesn't, if it's 10, 15, 20 years out, then all the price appreciation on the stock that's happened for the past many years is going to go away because that was what it was based on. This idea that they would have self-driving cars and they would become, you know, a $10 trillion company or something like that. And as of late, that's just not how it's shaking out. So we'll see how that goes. But other automakers really haven't made those promises. But so they don't have that wild card out there. They don't have that big sort of thing looming where people put all this money into this product. People were paying upwards of fourteen or $15,000 for this product that doesn't exist and likely won't exist for many years to come. So that right there can't continue. As you can see, they've already dropped the price down to $8,000. So this causes a big stir and a big problem for them. Whereas say, you know, the traditional OEMs, like all the other ones that are catching up to them, Volkswagen, Hyundai, uh, you know, Ford, everyone else, they've not made those promises. They say they're working on it, but they're not there yet. Um, and that, I think, is the big difference here. They're selling cars. Their stock and everything else is, is priced based on them being automakers. Tesla was based on them being this software vendor that was going to revolutionize car ownership and all these other things. So because that hasn't been solved and Elon's been promising it for a long time now, I think whether or not Tesla is going to bounce back is a big question mark still. But EVs overall, 60% growth year over year. Every single sign you look at for the EV industry is a positive one. So whether or not that future is Tesla still dominating with 50% it isn't really answering the question of whether or not EVs are going to grow because that all appears to be pointed in the right direction. They could end up like Apple where they have a small percentage of the actual phone sales overall. But I think that Tesla will bounce back from this. They still make tremendous products. The Model Y, I absolutely love, and I highly recommend to almost everybody I talk to, especially now with the recent price cuts. So Tesla has the hardest thing, which is a great brand and great products. But they're putting so much betting the farm on all these new kind of moonshot ideas that that's where their liability lies, in my view. I'm curious to know what you guys think, so leave me a comment down below. Also, make sure to check out my video over here where I do a deep dive into the cost of a new EV and kind of debunk that myth that they're super expensive. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you back here next time.